Marcy here from Asahi Nice Decor. First of all, Happy New Year. I'm so excited to be back. Took some time off uh, for the Christmas brush and holidays with the family and then the new year. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty glad 2020 is finally behind us. Not that 2021 is looking that much better, but I do have hope. I'm excited to bring you guys some new content. So with that being said, today I'm gonna talk about cutting boards and then we're actually gonna engrave on one. But my favorite cutting boards that I love to use from places right down the street from me and also online. So this first one um, is a bamboo cutting board. It's actually from Amazon, comes in a set of three. I will drop that link down in the description below. Um, these are great. This is the smallest one that comes in the pack and I actually love using these for personalized charcuterie boards. Check out this one that I did right here. So next up is this mango wood cutting board actually from Ikea. It does come in two different sizes. I love this because of the different wood tones and green in here. And this next one is this bamboo cutting board actually from Walmart. And um, they carry these in two different sizes. And these turn out really well or great for like handwritten recipe orders that if you're doing those. Um, but overall a really nice finished product when you're done. So the one I'm actually gonna be working on today with you guys is this acacia wood cutting board. It comes with this little leather strap, nice good size. This is actually from Johnson Plastics Plus. I do have a discount code for them. I'll drop it down in the video description below. Um, but these are probably my favorite cutting board. And the reason for that is just, it turns out so nice when you engrave it. And the wood tones vary from each board. So let's get started and make something cool. Today I'm gonna be creating my design in Adobe Illustrator. Now if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, if this isn't what you use, use normally you can obviously use any other program and if you are a subscriber to glowforge's monthly subscription you can actually do this right in the glowforge app on your computer so to start i'm going to type out my text now if you're not familiar with adobe illustrator you just come over here to your type tool click that drag out a box and start typing your phrase if you're a Schitt's Creek fan, then you'll understand this phrase, but today we are going to type out fold in the cheese. Now, this isn't the font I want to use, so I'm going to come right up here to my character list, drop this down, and I am going to use the Monticelli script today. This is one of my favorite uh, script fonts, nice and easy to read, not too big of a brush stroke, and it looks fantastic on cutting boards. So once I've done that, I'm going to come up here to type, create outlines, Pathfinder and once I hit the Pathfinder tool you can see all of these. I'm going to click Unite will become one cut path. So now that I've done that I'm just going to go ahead and size it down to what I want. Come over here to my Transform tab and this is where you can check the sizing of your um, design. So I'm going to stretch this out just a little bit so it covers um, more of the bottom of the cutting board where we're going to be placing it. So now once I've done this, I'm going to come up here to File, Save As, and we'll call this Fold in the Cheese. And we're going to save this as an SVG so it is compatible once we go into the Glowforge interface. All right, so once you're ready, you're going to open up your Glowforge. Now, I thought I was going to be able to get away with not having to take the crumb tray out with this, but it is just a little bit too thick. Um, so this cutting board is about a half inch thick. So anything at that size or over, I'm typically going to take the crumb tray out just to make sure that I don't have any issues with cutting. Oftentimes what happens if you put something in a little bit thicker. Down here under your carriage plate where your air assist fan is, there's a little piece where the fan connects to, so the vent piece, um, that will actually hit is whatever is on your crumb tray if it is too thick. So what I'm gonna do is I have actually these two little tiny cutting boards that end up being about an inch tall and I'm gonna stack those right in my center and once I've done that I'm actually gonna go ahead and place my cutting board right on top of there. So if you think about it you're basically back to where you started with the height of the crumb tray possibly a little bit taller. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that like that and go get my design set up on the computer ready to engrave. All right, so once your cutting board or whatever you're working with is in your Glowforge and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and come over to my Glowforge dashboard, upload my file. And then we're going to talk about settings. So for me, I already have all my programs or my settings saved. 
for what I'm working with and I'll show you how you can do that so that way you're not having to adjust settings each time. Um, but up here I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to select the medium draft board setting and because of the size of the cutting board, um, this works out great. So I'm going to go ahead and I have two glow gorges so i got to switch back and forth. So I'm going to switch this over to the plus machine which is what we're working on today. I'm going to drag this down here and this is actually a little bit bigger than what I want so with that I'm just going to adjust this and thinking we're going to put this in the middle so maybe we actually will make this a little bit bigger. Now if I wanted to I could flip this around and go this way which actually I think I kind of like so let's do that. Let's do this down here that way if they decide to actually use this as a cheese board um, you can see that design there at the bottom. So once I've done that I'm going to come over here to engrave. Now you can see I already have a bamboo board setting. This is actually what I'm going to use today. Now if I was going to change this and I wanted to save this for a future setting what I would do is after I adjust all my settings here is then I would go to the save button or I could save as and save this as a new one. So we're going to go ahead and do that so I can put in acacia cutting board and if I hit save then it's right there and I can go back so you can see for engravings I have all these different settings here so let's go back here to really quick so I'm actually going to change the lines per inch to 195 so sometimes you'll hear me refer to this as LPI um, if you guys have questions I always tell you to adjust your LPI depending on the look that you're going for um, this will create more seamless engrave versus having lines in it and um, so that'll help. Focus height, I'm actually going to keep right where it is. It is set perfectly for this. Now, if you're unsure of this, you can always use digital calipers. I highly recommend using those. I used them when I was a newbie, um, but as I got more comfortable with my machine, I didn't worry about it so much. So I'm going to adjust this over one more time, and we are ready to go. So now I'm just going to come over here, hit print, and we will watch this happen. Well, life of somebody who films videos, my storage was full, so it cut off the rest of the engrave, but we are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and you can see how amazing this came out. And you'll notice I didn't mask the bottom and I'm holding a wipe in my hand. So I'm gonna show you guys what I do next, should it leave little burn marks like that. All right, so if you need to, you can just, I just use a baby wipe and I'm just gonna wipe it off and it'll actually completely remove any of that burn mark and clean up really nicely. Once you're done, depending on the type of cutting board and whether it's just gonna be used as a decoration or if they're actually gonna use it, um, you can treat this with a cutting board oil. I'll drop a link to um, one that I like to use down in the video description below. It is not required and you can also just recommend that your customers do it. And sometimes if I'm doing it as a gift or it's going to a customer is I'll attach a little cutting board care card right on here somewhere um, so that the customer can preserve this as long as possible. For today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, making this cutting board with me. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram, um, email me, whatever you need. I'm always here to help. And also, if you don't have a Glowforge yet, don't forget you can use my referral code to save up to $500 off your purchase.